Let's try on an applied optimization problem. On this one, a garden store wants to build a 600 square foot rectangular enclosure on the store's parking lot in order to display some equipment. Now we know three sides of this enclosure will be built from redwood fencing, and they give us a cost for this. It's going to be $7 per running foot. The fourth side is going to be cement blocks, is it going to be $14 per running foot? Our goal is to find the dimensions of the least costly enclosure. So as we set this up, I definitely suggest draw yourself a picture like we have on the right hand side. We know it's rectangular, so draw a rectangle. Now two of these sides can be X and two of these sides can be Y. And you'll notice on how mine's drawn over on the right hand side, the bottom side looks a little bit different than the other three. That's going to be the one that cement blocks as opposed to the redwood. So as we get going on these, we want to set up a constraint equation, basically some boundaries that we have, something that's constraining how big we make this. And that comes with the 600 square foot rectangular enclosure. All right, that's going to be the area of this rectangle. So one way to represent the area of our rectangle is x multiplied by y. But we can also say that it can be represented by it has to equal 600. We want it to be 600 square feet. All right, the other thing we want to have going on this is we want to figure out an objective function, something that we're, we're trying to maximize or minimize, the objective of this problem. So in our case, it's going to be we want to find the least costly such enclosure. So we want to minimize our cost. So let's try to make a cost function. Now this is going to come from the fact that we know that one of these sides is going to be $14 per running foot. As I said, I'm going to make that the bottom side. So $14 multiplied by however many feet Y is. While the other three sides were each going to be $7 per running foot. So I can have 7X, 7Y, and 7X to represent those. Next, setting up our cost function, the total cost is going to be 14y plus 7x plus 7y plus 7x. Right, the perimeter, the to go all the way around here, each side multiplied by the cost per side. We can do a little bit better on getting this equation by simply combining like terms. We can get to uh, 14x plus 21 Wise. The problem with this though is we have two variables on the right hand side. We have both x's and y's. So what we want to do next is utilize that constraint equation. It's an equation that involves both x and y. So let's go ahead and solve this for either x or y. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose to solve this for y by dividing both sides by x. So I can say that y can be represented by 600 divided by x in this problem. I'm next going to take that over to our cost function, and I'm going to replace the y in our cost function with 600 divided by x. All right, because those are supposed to be equal based on our constraint equation. All right, from here, let's simplify a little bit. So this will be 14x plus, I'm going to treat that 21 as if it's over 1. Multiply numerators together. Get 12,600. And I'm going to go ahead and think that x is raised to the first power while it's in the denominator. We're allowed to move it up to the numerator and make it a negative exponent. All right, so if we're trying to minimize the cost, we'd like to find any critical numbers or critical values on this. So to do that, we want to take the first derivative, power rule. And that's why I wrote the x to the negative first power, is so I could use the power rule here instead of, say, the quotient rule. So that's going to be negative 12,600 x to the negative second power, which can be rewritten as c prime is 14 minus 12,600 over x to the positive second. All right, now our Critical numbers or critical values occur either whenever the first derivative is undefined, which in this case, I think if we plugged in a zero, it'd be undefined, or when the first derivative is equal to zero. So what if I set the first derivative equal to zero? Solving this down, what I'd probably do is I would um, move that fraction to the other side. So I'd go ahead and add 12,600 over x squared to the other side and it's going to equal 14. 
Now, I can't solve for x while it's in the denominator, so I'd go ahead and multiply both sides by x squared. This will give us 12,600 equals 14x squared. We can make that into a power equation by dividing both sides by 14. So x squared is going to be 12,600 divided by 14, which should work out to be 900. Now we still need to get rid of the square, so let's apply a square root to both sides. We don't really have to worry about the positive and negative case here because the context, x is a side length for this fence. So it's, we can't really have a negative side length. So x is going to be 30, and that's going to be a critical number. What we'd like to do is next double check, is that going to be a maximum or a minimum value? All right, so to do so, I'm going to use the second derivative test. Okay, second derivative test says you want to take the second derivative of c and the derivative of 14. I'm going back to this version of c prime. Derivative of 14 is going to be 0, and then we're going to get, what, positive 2 times 1,200 or 12,000. 600 x to the negative third power. So that works out to be 25,200 over x cubed if we'd like. Evaluating this when we have an x value of 30 is going to give us an overall positive value. What that tells us is this function is concave up concave up at an x value of 30, and that implies that we have a minimum. All right, concave up, graphs look something like that, so we're going to get a minimum. All right, we did want the dimensions, so we now have an x value, and we can be confident that's the correct x value. To get the y value that goes with that, I'm going to go back to our constraint equation. I know y was represented by 600 divided by x, but we know our x value should be 30 at this point, so our y value in ideal circumstance here is going to be 20. So the dimensions here, it was 20 along the bottom and the top, and 30 on the sides. All right, so the more costly side should be 20 feet long made out of the cement blocks. All right, hope this helps out. I know these can be long problems, but set yourself up a constrained equation Figure out what your objective is here, um, where you're, whatever you're trying to maximize or minimize, and make them work together. All right, hope this helps.